Hello, everyone. I'm Isaac Mendoza. I hope that your career workshop experience has been really impactful to you so far. Today, I want to share with you some advice and tips about looking strategically at a job offer and understanding how and when to go about negotiating that offer so it's most beneficial for you and your family and your situation. Now, of course, you don't have to negotiate a job offer, but it's helpful to remember reasons why it's advantageous to have these conversations. Everyone spends so much time of their lives at their place of work, and because of this, we should make sure that our job and our workplace is aligned with who we are and what we need to be most successful. You all bring so much value because of the skills and experiences that you've had and that are just unique to just you. That doesn't mean, or that means that you deserve to make your, your, your wants and your needs known in a way that makes sense and that connects with the employer. Another reason to negotiate an offer is because American culture can put so much focus on the salary component of your job. Employers can make assumptions when they look at your salary, whether that's about your work productivity or they may associate a higher salary with leadership potential. Um, as well, an offer that you receive may not be consistent with the industry research that you've conducted. Uh, so you may want to go back to the employer with that information to strengthen your request for a better offer. You might also find that there are certain important elements of your job that are missing in your offer. And lastly, many American employers already expect that a negotiation conversation might happen as part of the job offer process. So what to do when an, a job offer is made? There are several key actions that we recommend to take whenever you receive a job offer. First, showing sincere gratitude for the offer, showing appreciation for the opportunity, and reiterating your interest in the company and in the position. Second, requesting any additional information that could be missing. Did they mention a signing bonus? Who would be covering any relocation costs if that applies to your situation? Getting information like this clarified up front is going to help as you consider the whole offer package. Uh, and finally, making sure that you receive the offer in writing. Often there are additional details regarding the offer that are included in a formal letter. Uh, these details are essential for you to review and evaluate to fully understand what the whole offer is providing you. A common question that you might have after receiving a job offer is how to manage the decision-making timeline. So you should ask that the employer, uh, you should ask the employer when a decision is needed. And when you know that, we recommend the following steps. So find and schedule a time to discuss the details of your offer with the employer before the date of your final decision becoming due. Uh, communicate with any other companies that you may be interviewing with or waiting for decisions from. If you're still in the process with other companies, we recommend that you let them know that you've received an offer from another company. And you can ask for an extension to the decision deadline if you need it, but keep in mind that you should only ask this once. Typical extensions range from a few days up to two weeks, depending on the employer and what the position you're being offered is. When it comes to the flow of negotiation, you know, you may be thinking, what does this process even look like? And in a simple way, it's just four easy things. So you're going to first do work to prepare for the conversation and you're going to meet with the employer. Second, you'll open the conversation by beginning to lay out your requests and why. Third comes the bargaining. Uh, where you could highlight certain things that you're asking for that are higher priorities than others. Something like, although these are very important requests I feel that are appropriate for the skill and experience that I bring to the table, it's very important that I have access to the additional travel benefits because of the long commute time that I will have each day, things like that. Um, lastly, you'll close the negotiation uh, on your side of the conversation, again, expressing the appreciation that you have for the offer and what the potential great things that you can see yourself doing in the role. At that point, the employer would then respond to your requests. But before we get to, into the nuts and bolts of having the conversation, let's take a step back and understanding how to prepare for it. Uh, we're first going to talk about what the different parts of the offer are that you may want to consider negotiating in the first place. And so first up is financial priorities. So when people, most people think about the negotiation process, they're usually thinking about the monetary compensation first. So here, your overall compensation consists of a number of different elements. There's your base salary. When you negotiate your offer, there's generally some room to negotiate a higher base salary. And, and this should always be your top priority when you negotiate because future salary increases will always be based on some percentage of that initial figure. Uh, many offers may also come with an additional sign-on bonus, which 
could be negotiable in some cases. You may be able to negotiate when your next merit review occurs so that you're eligible for merit increases before the annual review process takes place. Some companies also offer compensation in the form of stock options. Uh, many companies will help pay for the cost of your relocation. All of these things can be fair game in the negotiation process. There's also other aspects of your total compensation package that you can keep in mind. Many com companies offer their employees uh, the option to uh, participate in savings and retirement plans. Um, some companies also offer assistance with tuition and student loans if you decide to pursue further education. Another thing to think about is your lifestyle. So you may be able to negotiate additional vacation time, for example, or a flexible start date. More and more companies are offering their employers greater flexibility in working arrangements. Uh, some companies may even provide assistance for spouses uh, in finding employment in a new city. These are all good things to consider when you're making your final decision. Um, when it comes to career path and responsibilities, don't forget to don't forget about to think about the importance of the overall work environment. You're going to be spending the majority of the week at your job, so these are all very important things to consider. Um, but also think about the offer in terms of the impact it can have on your career. Be sure that you're comfortable with the level of responsibility that you'll be taking on in this new position, as well as the types of projects that you'll be assigned. Um, you should also think about the different opportunities that will be available for your own training and professional development down the road. Geographic location is also something important to consider as cost of living and career opportunities can really vary by region. Uh, finally, travel requirements should be evaluated. Um, understanding upfront how much travel will be expected in your new role and carefully consider the impact this could have on your career and your life goals. So now that you know what you want, now you need to prepare by knowing information about the job market and about what you can bring to the table. If you're trying to negotiate for something like a higher salary or additional benefits, it's important to know what other people in the same role or others in your industry are being paid. There are many ways of looking about this. Um, a great start is by understanding some statistics uh, that you have to have at the ready. So if you're asking for a higher salary, you can say something like, I'm asking for the salary in part because the average median salary for this role across the industry is X. You know, making sure that you figure out what your rock bottom level, mid-level, and ideal salary figures are. Um, and always keep the employer interest in mind. Are they a smaller company that may not be able to meet the salary requirements that you're asking for? Or even looking at the company. You know, I know that X company really focuses on the well-being of its employees. I really value opportunities to give back and volunteer while representing my company. So that's why I'm requesting, for an example, an extra week of paid leave so I can volunteer for food banks in my community, some things like that. You should also mentally prepare for um, you know, recapping your personal highlights for the conversation. You want to remind the employer of your accomplishments and your successes, times that you've really navigated tough, similar situations, and so you can let your track record shine for itself. Uh, you can also have your education highlights at the ready to lean on, and you can even reference a past salary figure that you've made in the past to highlight some credibility there. Um, but into now doing your homework. So if you decided to negotiate some aspect of your offer, be sure to have all of the necessary data to support your request for more than what has been offered. So salary statistics can be found on useful websites, such as the ones that you'll see on the right-hand side of the slide. Uh, I know that for myself, in my previous negotiation discussions, Glassdoor uh, and Payscale have both been very useful websites that have given me strong data and insight into what the norm has been uh, for others across the industry. Um, also for industry information, and for company information, I've used personal contacts and online resources to figure out what's appropriate to be asking for and to better understand the company's perspective and approach to certain things. Also very important, cost of living resources. So if you are now living in New Mexico, but your new role is in New York City, that's going to be a significant shift for you. Uh, and you're going to want to do that homework to understand how you can justify the request for an increased salary because of the drastic difference in everyday costs in the two places. Okay. So now that we've done the actual homework to be the most prepared you can for this negotiation conversation, let's dive into how this will play out. So first and foremost, you're planning for this conversation in advance. You know, you should be practicing this conversation several times. 
you can role play to get the best feel of the conversation with a trusted colleague, a mentor, a friend. You know, this practice can be very helpful um, and can really make the difference between having a great and competent negotiation conversation or one that falls flat and is unsuccessful. Also important to note that employers expect to have these discussions live, uh, either by the phone or face-to-face. -face. Never attempt to negotiate an offer via email. Um, lastly, remember to start the discussion with appreciation and be mindful of your tone of voice throughout the conversation. When it's time to have this important conversation with an employer, outline your request one at a time. So if you are asking for an increase in the base salary, do that first and back up your request with the information to support it. And then if there are additional aspects of the negotiation uh, that you want to bring up, then move on to those other elements of the offer that you want to discuss or confirm. During this conversation, you may decide to accept or decline the new or existing terms. You should also thank them for having the conversation. Uh, if you're not ready to communicate your decision quite yet, let them know that you will still do so by the agreed upon date. Uh, of course, if any changes are made to your offer during the conversation you have, you should request an updated offer letter that reflects those changes that you discussed. And once you've communicated your needs and desires, you're gonna to need to give the employer an opportunity to respond. This could take some time as the person that you're working with may not have that final authority to make you a better offer. Um, once the employer comes back to you with the response, you should consider the negotiation process more or less over now. Uh, avoid a series of counter offers back and forth and, and never introduce new terms or requests after the initial discussion. It's important to remember that they have needs and interests as well. So you need to be prepared to meet somewhere in the middle. Now to help you get ready uh, for this important discussion, we want you to be prepared also for some typical pushback from employers when candidates do try to negotiate. Um, on the left, on the right hand side of the slide here, you'll see some of the most common uh, responses you could hear, right? So it's important to think about this beforehand and be ready with a response if you find yourself in this situation. Another important piece that we don't wanna leave out is what it looks like when you're negotiating too much. Uh, which is a definitely a no-no in the job offer process. You can't come back with other requests, right? And having a back and forth on the offer is not possible as well. Uh, you also need to listen to and try to empathize with the needs of the company and understand why it could be a struggle for them to offer you that full package that you're requesting. You'll never want to say something like, give me what I'm requesting or I'm out, right? That's a, a terrible way to harm your reputation. Uh, lastly, don't be bringing in other offer details. So. Something like, well, I'm being offered a, a $10,000 signing bonus at you know, this other place. What are you going to do for me? Um, there's definitely a more tactful way to talk about multiple offers and encourage a competitive response without seeming like you're bragging or divulging a lot of various um, offer details. So in terms of accepting a position, you've finished your negotiating your offer and you've decided to accept a position. Congratulations. Um, now you would need to verbally or in writing, though it's common to do both, accept the role. If you've negotiated any part of your offer in a way that it made a change, make sure that offer letter that you sign and return to the employer incorporates any of those changes that you may have discussed in your conversation. Now I know none of you will do this, but it's highly unprofessional to go back on an offer after you've accepted it. Uh, and there could really be some unexpected consequences if you do this. Um, once you've either accepted verbally or in writing, you're more or less committed. And at this point, you should stop all interview and negotiation activities that you may be having with other companies and focus your energy on stepping into your new job. Uh, but if you are in a position to turn down a company uh, job offer, we recommend the following. So if you're accepting another offer, be certain that those details are set. Um, mention that another opportunity was simply a better fit for the stage of your career. Um, respond verbally and, and follow up in writing. Remain appreciative, positive, and professional throughout your interactions. And you never know when your paths are gonna cross again. So to summarize, first and foremost, always express your enthusiasm and sincere interest in the position and the company. Remember that you shouldn't feel pressure to accept any offer immediately and be sure that you get any additions to the offer included in a formal offer addendum. If you do end up being successful in negotiating what you've asked for, then you need to be prepared to accept or reject the offer based on that information. There's no going back to ask for more after that. Um, be sure to think about the long term. Too many people focus solely on that base salary and signing bonuses uh, when evaluating the offers and, and forget about those other important criteria we mentioned. 
finally have confidence in yourself. You have a strong set of skills and experiences that you bring to the table, and they ultimately want you to accept their offer. I hope this has been helpful. Um, thanks for tuning in, and good luck out there.